You know, they probably could have got Eric Dickerson to play the L.A. Ram. I'm Justin. Annabelle. More like movie that stinks. I'm Sam. Both of you guys' opening lines just suck dick. Just like this movie. I'm Jackie, and this is Annabelle on Stinger Madness. Hello, welcome to Stinker Madness. This is a podcast about bad movies for bad movie lovers by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin. With me are always Sam and Jackie. This week on the show, currently streaming on uh, Netflix 2014, Annabelle. It's a little shitty doll movie thing. Not really. Uh, and also, Jackie, Eric Dickerson was a goddamn American hero. Hall of Fame player. How dare you say that he sucked dick? I mean, if he did, that's his prerogative. But either way, he was a fucking phenomenal football athlete guy. Which, which is why he doesn't deserve to be involved in non-jokes like you just Chou- told. Touche, touche. Yeah, well, dude. I mean, come on, guys. L.A. Rams. That's a good joke. This movie takes place in L.A. and it's the disciples of the Rams. And like My- this movie is prophetic. Like, like I, 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 the sequel of this is the cops swarm in and they're like, "No more L.A. Rams. We're getting rid of them." And they go to St. Louis and St. Louis is like, "No, we're okay on L- St. Louis Rams too. You can have them back, L.A." And that's how the sequel, uh, you know, the third part takes place with Matt Stafford, the L.A. Rams. He dresses up all in black, does some mime shit. Have you ever seen Matt Stafford's miming? crawls on the ceiling not. yeah he crawls around on the ceiling doesn't say anything wears the little hat and dresses up all in black it's 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 one of his weird things that he does and then he throws touchdowns hmm. yeah weird weird sequel weird 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 direction that this franchise went in but uh you know who am i to say what's intelligent in teenage makeout movies because i think that's what this is are we in agreement that this is where they put it up on the their target market is they put it up on the screen. They don't want to think anybody's going to actually like it. They just sell tickets to teenagers who go to the back of the theater and put their hand under the sweater over the bra. Yeah, I feel like there was ample make out to like this is really paced for making out that there was the front end. Nothing happened so that you can just make out. And then there's mm-hmm. a brief like shame period before there's anything that really happens. I thought in the, in the makeout strategy, though, was to get your girlfriend scared so that she wanted to snuggle up to you. And that's when you slip your dick into the bottom of the popcorn. Like, she has to be scared first for this whole rapey thing to kind of work, right? She can't just be bored. I feel like this would make you so bored that you're just like, well, we you're have to me. make out. <laughs> If you want to make it out of this theater alive, we need to, like, spit on each other's faces awkwardly. (laughs) Jackie, your take? (laughs) What happens if you get salt in your pee hole? Uh, I don't don't know if you ordered the salt, but also the oil. I don't know, man. Don't stick your dick in popcorn. Like, just don't do it. It's it's, uh, uh, doctors. Nine out of ten doctors say don't put your dick in popcorn. It's just ask for the hand job. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Safer. You just show up to the theater with a small blanket, a box of tissues and some lotion and be like, I get cold. I have the sniffles and my hands are awfully dry. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> <that's so gross. laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Sam. Uh, what can you tell us about Annabelle? Well, Annabelle is the realization of a system, oddly enough, That is a byproduct of James Wan. Okay. James Wan being one of the original splat pack when horror got to be R again, right? Mm -hmm. Saw. Mm -hmm. Right. He did Saw. Saw, by all accounts, cost about a million dollars. And maybe once it got big and it was like having a much longer theater run than it was supposed to. And it was sort of a phenomenon. It's like, oh, the budget was one to two. Maybe they probably bought some commercials afterwards or like, oh, go see this. So maybe it cost two million, but it returned a hundred million off of whatever it really cost. And there's a good chance that the production itself cost less than a million dollars. Um, did not immediately revive Carrie Elwes's career, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Kept him alive, yeah. Kept him alive. Family got to eat. Um, he then did his first doll movie afterwards. They thought it would be super creepy. It was called Dead Silence, and it failed miserably in terms of this movie. Like, it broke even. 
Got so that's no a bad deal because you're supposed to make 10 to 1 on these shit piles, mm-hmm. and they consistently do. It is odd. Um, it's not. You go here to make out or whatever. Right. I don't know. Um, eventually, around 2011, Juan is in sort of dire straits. The Splat Pack in general never really realized itself. The Rob Zombie movies do okay, but... The audience at large has decided that it doesn't like rated R horror movies. So weird because you can't because adult people don't like horror movies regardless of how well done and gory they are. Like Usually, gore yeah. porn is just never going to have a wide audience, I guess. Yeah, not not a mass. It's a, it's a niche thing. So after kind of kicking around and having some failures, uh James Wan would team with also floundering filmmaker and producer uh, Jason Bloom for the largely independent picture Insidious in 2011, which did its 10 to 1 return Mm -hmm. in such a fashion that the other studios are like, what the fuck? Because uh, the first saw was the first time that Lionsgate didn't go bankrupt because they finally made a movie that made money and then they'll do this again a hundred times. And John Wick is the most recent, I guess, but... uh, Insidious was largely independent and I think film wise got to distribute it. So Warner's immediately like, we're not going to let this shit fly. If people are making this kind of cash, we're going to be the ones to make that kind of cash. If you also don't know where Bloom really hit big was Paranormal Activity, which cost 15,000 and yeah. made like. All of the ca- I think 100 million off 15,000 or something damn, like dude. that. God damn, don't ask teenagers. Um, so Warner is immediately invested in these two, and they realize immediately that they can just divide their efforts. So the same year, you're going to get The Conjuring by Juan and The Purge, which is helmed by Bloom, but God knows who directed it because I didn't even watch it or care. Mm. But they both did their 10 to 1 returns immediately. And early on in this, Warner's already like, okay, fuck this. If we're going to make this kind of cash, we need to be able to really churn this shit out. And I'm sure everybody besides Warner that has their own horror division um, will get on in the same model. But it's not just that let's turn sequels out on these. Let's spin these off and have these small block properties that can generate mega bucks off of and not really mega bucks, but like serious cash off of a minimal investment. Uh, And the very first film to do this exact formula is Annabelle Mm -hmm. to the point that it is so derivative of the bloom one thing that the cinematographer that shot insidious is just like, you can direct this. Right. And he's like, sure. Sure, He also had uh, directed um, his John R. um, Louviet or something like that. He was also the director of Moral Combat Annihilation and God had to go back it. to shooting films oh, for a while. Oh, and then no. uh, after the success of this, he has not had to shoot a film. He's directed movies just as shitty as this that seem to do decent returns. Oh. Um, but Annabelle is the picture where they're like, this is exactly how we can squeeze the grape all the way dry. And when they squeezed that grape, they were like, let's spend we're not going to spend more than 10 million because this is now 2014 which is funny that i think that they're like let's exploit this formula perfectly one year after they did the formula because the purge and conjuring are 2013 Mm -hmm. right right they're like let's get as many lanes open on this one bloom thing as we fucking can i can't say they're wrong because all of the fucking cash um the bloom averse yeah, it's really odd. He was the like production manager for Ethan Hawke's theater. He before Paranormal Activity was dabbling into heavily independent. Like he seemed like he wanted to make art films, and then that thing made all the cash, and he's like, "Well, I want to make art films, but look at this fucking cash." Yeah, I uh, look I had integrity at this cash until I saw this mountain of cocaine in front of me. Yeah. So the cash. 
This returned two hundred and sixty five million on six point five million, mm-hmm. which is more than Insidious. It's That's not more than the Conjuring, point. and it's not more than the Purge, because right. those had Warner behind them, right, and larger budgets behind them. Um, but what a pile of cash for six and a half mil so on something that had to take maybe six weeks to shoot. Maybe, maybe, and nothing in, done in post. No, there's no. There's no CGI. There's no. It's principle it's all, all the way. Principle. Yeah. It's actually. I watched this on one of the. I'm going to commend Netflix because of all the streaming services that we have to deal with for this program and how crappy some of their stuff is. Mm-hmm. Like when I watch on Prime or I watch on Tubi or I watch on any of these other things that we watch shit on, I've got an ultra wide monitor when I choose to not involve anyone else in watching the films like this one. I wasn't going to make anybody else watch this. When I watch on those other streaming services, it'll just have it like widescreen way inside of my screen. Netflix was like, oh, you've got an ultra wide? Well, here is your full screen giving yeah. CinemaScope on my screen. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. And I was able to notice that, wow, this was really shot well. That's why I'm pushing the schedule up to six weeks because I think that's kind of a lot for something like this. But if you're doing all. Uh, principal effects and you're doing just a good job with mostly static shots and All general interiors. cinematography but the gaffers the lighting crew everybody's doing a good job there's lens changes frequently so it's a minimal production but they're not mailing it in no. it also beyond the like here's your makeout part parts before it gets sort of exciting this is just completely by the book this is how you do suspense in the c class like it's pacing there is no divergence from 60s and 70s suspense horror at all this is so fucking by the book if if you're talking like the, the beginning of psycho where you know she's getting away from being an embezzler basically uh there's not any stabbings going on if you're talking about that type of thing but the th- the element that you're that is critical that you're missing into that when you are just table setting a horror film is you have to have music and this did not the it's just conversation after conversation of just hey we live here and things are great and we're having a baby and we're going to talk about an exposition, exposition, exposition. And there is nothing to accompany it in the back end to bring tension. It's just fucking people living their lives for three quarters of this movie. Yeah. And I'm the post-production unit maybe didn't hold their end of it. There is no music. It's weird. Like maybe that was too expensive. Yeah. They spent too much shooting it, I guess. I don't know. Jack, I don't know. I think, I think the best shot in the entire movie is from their bedroom window when the neighbors are getting murdered. Yeah. Um, I loved that shot and I haven't seen anything like that in, in any other movie that I've watched. So I thought that was a good way to probably watch more, Hitchcock. have the gore, but remove yourself from the gore. You should, you should probably watch more Hitchcock. That's it, yeah. it, I, I bring up psycho for a reason. This is just shitty Hitchcock for the most part. It's shitty Hitchcock without a ensemble. There's no uh, orchestra. Yeah. Or acting. Acting is also missing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can we talk about who's in this, Sam? Anybody Not that yet. we care no, about? No, we got to oh, keep it. talking about the oh, we, oh, film God. history of it. So eventually, because I want to give Bloom a little credit for liking Cash, but then kind of being like, you know, I am going to do an art movie here and there. He did do a pretty good movie that was mostly responsible by uh, Jason Bloom, Whiplash. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, that's true. Whiplash was a Bloom movie, and we were all like, ha! Huh. Yeah, I think that's what he wanted to do, but I know he now knows fully that if he wants to do that, he can do that once every five to ten years, as long as he keeps churning this shit out for Warner. Hey, or himself. Uh, how's, he's, how's my coke pile doing? Well, it looks okay. All right, let's crank out something that's not a piece of shit. It seems like every studio now has like a reliance on him at some level to have a 
decent return shitty movie. Like everybody has bloom on their block list at this point. Um, right. And then James Wan's like currency through this is that he's able to then almost resurrect the DECU with the popularity of Aquaman two. Hmm. And then completely verify that the whole thing needs to get sunk with the popularity of Aqua or Aquaman one kills it. Aquaman two right. is like, yep, we need to reboot let's this just, whole fucking let's thing. Stop. Stop what we're doing. Yeah. To the point that I guess DECU is like, well, we're going to keep Momoa, but we don't want him to be Aquaman anymore. We're going to have him be Lobo. Because Lobo's going to put yeah, some put butts, butts in some in fucking seats. seats. Marvel's over there going, let's get Madam Web fired up. Huh? <laughs> what? Who's Lobo? Exactly. exactly. Exactly, Jackie. Very, very niche comic book character that was sort of popular. In, he's he's basically shitty Wolverine. Like, if you're pursuing the Wolverine people, you're like, hey, but Lobo's cool. And uh, no, 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 don't make a movie. No, that's a bad idea. They're so desperate. Like, I mean, God damn, dude. OK, we did it. The Avengers worked. Stop it. <laughs> Just stop. Put the. It's done. Nobody wants comic book movies anymore. Give it up. It's incredible how like you can have a successful cycle and then not and then see the next successful cycle happening and not just be like, okay, here's our next successful cycle. Let's not do that. Mm -hmm. And let's really just all lose our jobs clinging to this thing because there's no, the people that are calling the financial shots in movies don't know shit about movies. It's Mm -mm. been proven for the entire time movies have existed. How many times has Hollywood gotten into trouble? It's been more than a few. Uh, Anyway, let's talk about Ed and Lorraine Warren, right? Because Annabelle Mm -hmm. is actually one of the first cases of Ed and Lorraine. Lorraine. That's what they call her (laughs) because she was so smart. (laughs) Like that that Lorraine. She's more like Lorraine, the ghost chaser. (laughs) Lorraine James. (laughs) The Conjuring is about them. They're the ones that did the Amityville investigation. Uh 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 Um. Annabelle happened before that. It's actually not a porcelain creepy doll. It's just a raggedy Ann. Okay. okay. Um, it's in their house or they're dead, but right. I'll get there. Um, the history of Ed and Lorraine Warren is that he met Lorraine, Lorraine. got deployed into the World War II. His boat got sunk. Oh, no. And he survived. And he came back because you get X amount of survivor time before they put you back on a boat. And because he was, he a was swimmer. like, Lorraine, I got sunk in a boat. You should marry me now. And she did. Uh, Survives World War II. Comes back. They don't really know what to do. He's actually a fairly decent artist and is accepted into Yale. Okay. Drops out after two years because he can already just sell the shit. And it's mostly paranormal shit that he's doing. So they actually just take the shit out on the road in the early 50s. And then in 1952, when he's selling these things, people are like, hey, this house is really haunted. You should talk to these people. And the only way he was able to talk to them is he drew a sketch of their house and then like showed it to them. And they're like, Oh, that's really neat. And then he starts talking to him about it. And so he basically starts out as like a paranormal sketch artist. Like, was this what you saw? And I think that's kind of cool because at that point there's like no illegitimacy whatsoever there. He's just like, tell me what you saw and I'll draw it. And, um, that goes on for a while. They're the only people that are interested in most of these cases. And that's one thing that you'll find for anyone that ever talked to Ed or Lorraine Warren or both of them is that they are super nice people and they just tried to help when no one else would. Okay. Um, so we can't really bad mouth them until maybe later. I'll get to that in a second. They had a museum of the occult in their house. It was $13. It was one room and you exit through the gift shop. The gift shop. Gift shop, sorry. <laughs> I've never been to a gaft shop. Is that where the gaft shop? They, uh, Ed died in 2006. She died in 2019. Right okay. after they shut that shit down. After all those years, somebody made a zoning complaint. 
Huh. Okay. Because they were. And they had to gift, shut it down. They had a gaff shop. No gaff shops on this side of town. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. You have an ass face shop on your head. <laughs> Hey, laws are laws. And if it's on the books that you can't have a gaff shop, by God, we're going to enforce yeah. it. <laughs> well, according to your webcam, the business is good in the ass face shop on your neck. <laughs> There's no laws against ass faces on the neck. <laughs> gaff shops. <laughs> you, you let, be in they're, they're like rats, zone B12. <laughs> you let one gaff shop come in. You got a swarm of gaff shops everywhere. Gap, yeah. got to get the man in and enforce these goddamn laws. So wait, these yeah. are real people? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, you're the one that watches this shit. <laughs> well, I didn't know that they were real people. I just thought that they were part of the Insidious and... No, it's like based they were on... just characters. So they do a little bit of the Wilt Chamberlain. Mm. They claim to have investigated 10,000 cases, and okay. you're like, I don't know that you <laughs> had that much time. Lot. It's a lot of time. <laughs> it's a lot of the cases. But whatever, I mean, they are the predominant people of this pursuit uh mm. i think they founded the new england paranormal or psychic research society or something like it's called nesper um it's still around i think their daughter kind of operates what's left i'm sure they still have all the shit because it was in their house or her, their daughter has all the shit because it was in their house but it's just they can't charge 13 dollars and sell the merch anywhere but online i think you can still buy the merch online the website is still up and running uh, there is no plans to open the museum somewhere else where it would be legal because there really just, I don't think, was ever that much cash in this deal, right? Probably not. They never got super rich if the museum was in the one room of their house that they weren't using. 13 bucks a whack. 13 bucks a whack. Yeah. Yeah. It's not payola. Allegedly in the contract that they signed with Warner. Mm-hmm. Lorraine made clear that there wouldn't be any sexual business at all, but then got so specific as to say no sexual encounters between me and my husband. Okay. Also, no extramarital sexual encounters. Okay. Also, no sexual encounters involving minors. Huh. Allegedly. That's weird. Ed had an affair with a... that started with a girl when she was 15 until she was like 60 or something like that. So uh, God. I mean, you can't be like, Oh, he likes some young. Cause he kept doing it till she was 60. Uh, so they might've been swingers is what I'm guessing. Yeah, and maybe. in the fifties, I guess 15 was fair. Edge. Okay. But again, none of that's verified. All we know is that these people hunted ghosts and they're apparently the nicest people. And they have a bunch of fucking movies by different people made about them. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, um, Sure, Jeffrey Annabelle. Epstein had some good reviews from people as well, Sam, but uh, that's not... I don't think he did. He seemed like a great. total dirt bag all the way. It's he didn't great. help anybody except himself. It's not good. He tried to remake the human race in his own semen. Yeah, I... Uh... I'm still not... I'm not down. I don't, I don't care if they if their yelps were good. Uh, that's gross. And It's uh, gross. I don't, I don't um, like it. Annabelle itself, the real doll and the real thing that happened was mm -hmm. is that um, in 68, they started investigating this. I don't know if they closed it until 71. A nursing student had a doll and her and her roommate would notice that the doll would move from place to place. Okay. That's what we can gather actually happened. There's some reports that someone so heard that they were saying it was demonic or it was mm -hmm. violent or threatening or whatever. But mm -hmm. really what you have is this doll that just moves around. Okay. At a nursing school, which is totally a fucking boyfriend prank, until it happens through this investigation, at which point you probably have a stalker or something much more malicious, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm guessing that's what happened. Okay. Why would you, why would it be an adult? That's all that really can be verified is that, no, straight up, this thing just fucking shows up in another room sometimes. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, Jackie's a firm believer in uh, the paranormal. She likes spooky ghosts, not just for them to be on TV, but she believes in them and I make fun of her all the time. Sam, I think you uh, you aren't uh, unconvinced that spooky ghosts don't exist. Uh, 
But uh, I'm pretty on team. Yeah, it's all bullshit. And like you bring up uh, this doll moving around. My biggest problem with spooky ghosts in general is the why. Not the how, but the why. And I'm not going to delve too deep into that. But like if this doll's moving around and there's some element, uh, some thing spirit inside of it what kind of boring ass shit you got going on where you're like well i'm dead i'm just gonna sit in this doll and like now i'm over here i'm just gonna batman these people what the fuck are you doing with your afterlife god damn it what a waste of fucking time versus it's just some guy fucking it's just just some guy fucking with you god damn it if it was really a nefarious if i was a nefarious if i if i have the the great fortune of coming back and haunting someone's uh-huh. dolls. I hope to haunt someone that has cats or dogs or anything that has a litter box. So we we'll like, uh, the demon doll put cat shit in the oatmeal again. <laughs> Just the, I'm not really going to fuck with people. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Now I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Fuck off. <laughs> it, it never moves, but the cat shit ends up in strange places. <laughs> Oh, God, what a, yeah, no. Uh, But this one actually gets stupider. Like, this movie is stupider than the afterlife spirits coming and living in a doll and Batmaning some people. It's dumber than that. When you're spinning off this story that you've already contractually obligated yourselves to the Warrens, so Uh you can only do so much, and if you're going to then squeeze the grape, you have to... Stay in the parameters of your own contract and draw from their case files. And the case file was the doll moved around, so you're going to have to come up with some other okay. shit to make a movie. It's not enough. It's not enough there. Uh, I got it. Uh, the uh, This guy, he's a murderer, and on the day of his execution, he... Uh, get ends up in a doll. His spirit ends up in a doll. Yeah. And he I, the doll runs around and says some... Like, uh, nice tits, bitch type stuff and stabs people. How about that one? Yeah. Can we do that? Or you take the mafia angle and you just have the doll moving around, but it's like a misery thing with the doctor torturing the doll. No, that you are moving around in a man's house. It does not like things moving around in his house. And then he's kneecapping the doll. Like, look, honey, that doll's not walking anywhere on those kneecaps. Strapped to a bed. Tell me the next chapter of the book. What does that have to do with mur- misery? <laughs> you can't. Hopefully, <laughs> your face is a large fan of baseball bats. <laughs> I have three. Okay. Uh, Jackie, you got something to say? You got this expression on your face that. Uh... Nope. Nope. <laughs> She's gone no mime no i don't she's gone mime okay all right can we delve into this sam we're already 30 minutes sure a piece of shit that's I, none of us really want to deal with um the first problem with this movie is what the fuck who are these people it starts out with this like self-help group or maybe there's some kids that are getting invest interrogated by cops that are talking about annabelle the doll like moving her fucking around the house and shit and Then we flash back to one year earlier, and that is the last we see of these people. Who the fuck are those people? Those are the people that are in there because of the contractual obligations to cover the stories. Because those are the the nursing nursing student that that had the doll. They're in there for legal reasons to not get sued. This movie opens on not getting sued. Yes. Fuck off. Fuck off. Jesus Well, the rest Christ. of the movie doesn't happen at all in the case files. But, uh, Sam, it doesn't start out with based on a true story or any of that shit. It doesn't do that. It, oh, it's say, much worse than that. Just the, It starts out with the graphic that tells you what dolls are. Yeah, no shit. Right. In but case sh- you were curious. Yeah. <laughs> this is what dolls are. Which is the also, same opening as Barbie, believe it or not. <laughs> this is the opening of Bar- Barbie does it a little better, cur- better. Are you curious as to what dolls are? Well, if you are, here's what they are. Now that we've got you here, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and not get sued. Right? Then we can start our movie. That's how this fucking shit starts. I don't understand the legalness. Like, oh God, I don't care. 
It sucks so bad. Uh, okay, so flashback to one year earlier, uh, which seems not appropriate to have the thing that happened with the nurse. That, okay, anyways. They're in Santa Monica, and they're at a church, which leads me to my first question. Wait, there's a church in Santa Monica? Maybe Crickets. inland a bit. Santa Monica goes inland a fair bit. Not that far. If you, I mean, like, for listeners who haven't been to Santa Monica, it's a pretty wild place. It is, like, it's it's an artsy, very LGBTQ friendly environment that's next to Venice. You got the pier right there. You got a lot of drinking. You've got a lot of bums. It does flashing. not scream. What? Flashing. Yeah, lots of flashing. Uh, it's a it, it's a drug and alcohol gonad friendly environment. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It does not seem like there would be this. Oh well, put on your Sunday best. We're going to church. That's fucking the valley, man. Jesus, this is supposed to be sixty eight. So what? You don't think it was a fucking swinging time back in sixty eight? My parents got out of L.A. because it was getting too fucking crazy. It's yeah, it's seventy two. <laughs> I mean. LA has been a crazy place the whole time, Sam. There wasn't like, I, oh, the when the Catholics were in charge of LA. <laughs> that's when it was. That's when it was nice. We, now that fucking uh, Marion Barry, what the fuck was the governor? God damn it, Moonbeam Brown. No, yeah, Moonbeam. There's Moonbeam, but the guy that did it twice just got rid of him. That was Moonbeam Brown. No, 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 no. The governor. Uh, oh, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, now that Jerry's in charge, we got to get out of here. Yeah, no, L.A. was always crazy. Um, okay, so we got a, a husband and a wife. Uh, they seem like they haven't been married that long, but they're well-to-do uh, upper middle crust. Uh, he's a doctor. A neurosurgeon or something. I don't know. The pathologist or he's some guy. He's going to be getting his residency. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's not quite there yet, but they're they're doing well. It seems like he was in the military as well at some point. Uh, she's pregnant. Um, beloved. Oh, yeah. I, I just remembered my opening line that I forgot. Yeah. Turns out I am not into brother-sister porn. Don't they look like they're brother and sister? They kind of have... Like a one or twins. The same face. On. Yeah. 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 They, they kind of do. Hmm. Uh, but she was um, the love interest in Peaky Blinders. She was the oh. the guy's first wife. Annabella oh. Wallace. Annabella. Annabelle. 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 Her name is what? Annabelle and she's in Annabelle. She does what? other movies with James Wan as well. What? Hmm. Maybe that's a twist. No, that's not. Okay, so they all go back home. They've got these uh, their fr best friends with their neighbors. Uh, they're it's exposed to us that their their neighbor just lost a daughter, but what she did was she got mixed up with the PLA or whatever the fuck group that Patty Hearst got mixed up with, and uh, she, Mansons. You know they're not the Mansons, but the Mansons are going on at this point. There's the Patty Hearst shit. These these young girls are getting swept away from their families and caught up in this, uh, this pseudoscience culture that really is just David Koresh and cult leaders, guys that uh, want to bang girls and aren't cool enough to just go out and get chicks. So they have to be. Yeah. A cult leader. Well, it goes back to the electric six song. I am the man. I've got the drugs. Yeah, that yeah, that is true. That's, that they've is got true. they get them all. Everything makes sense when you're on that many drugs. Yeah, and uh, but it's all it, like that's the thing about cult leaders. It's just a power thing. They don't fucking the guys don't believe any of it. They're just there because they can't actually bang chicks by saying hi, I'm Steve, and the chicks go wah. They're like yeah, they run away, and so he's like oh god, I gotta become a cult leader so I can bang some chicks. Uh, that's it. It's just mental it's rape. Most of the cult ideology is probably just ad hoc made up when people start asking questions. Yeah, yeah totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, okay. So uh, that's going on in the backdrop. Um, and But the, the family's doing okay. Uh, the dad is apprehensive about becoming a father a little bit because, you know, it may get in the way of his work. And she's like, oh, how dare you? Um, and she's like, you have to promise me 
no matter what, if it's if we come to term and it's me or the baby, you're gonna choose the baby. And he's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, babe. Um, Wait, that's no, that happened happens already. After. Whatever. That's way. It, that's way later. It, it, so here's what the, happens the to me. That's what I'm table setting the whole goddamn thing. We don't have to go at the pace of this movie. It's just that's where they're at in life. Because there's no music in this movie. Mm -hmm. At one point, he before he gives her the Annabelle doll, he's like, I got something for you. Or what does he say exactly? Like, I want to, I have something I want to give you. And she goes, last time you said that, I got pregnant. At which point, speaking of the Electric Six, the song Gay Bar gets stuck in my head through like the rest <laughs> of the movie. He's like, I got something to put in you. <laughs> <laughs> so like all this tension supposed to be happening and i'm like right. oh my god i'm checking out constantly the, the first time ball, i look at the clock ball, is 22 22 48 i'm like oh god this is the quickest i've ever looked at no i think i had one that was quicker than this <laughs> but like i was really trying to not look at the clock but like anytime something's supposed to be like creepy and like mm, violins or something i've got uh. <laughs> Electric Six. If you haven't heard of them, check them out. You'll be happy you did. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so he's like, uh, I know you've been hunting for this for a really long time, and she's like, Oh, is it the one? And sh they pull out this Annabelle, and Annabelle is a disgusting, terrible, nightmare-inducing, but not because it's ah uh, creepy. It's ugly. It is an ugly fucking porcelain doll. Nobody would buy this in the history of porcelain dolls. It is the Annabelle had the bats taken to her face by the mafia before the mafia actually took the bats to her face, Sam. She got hit with the ugly stick and hit every fucking branch on the way down the ugly tree. We're not going to name names, but we had a friend in high school, Justin and I, whose mom had a lot of porcelain dolls and it was a whole room. It was a thing of nightmares. It was Dave. Dave Trentsman. <laughs> Calling you out, Dave Trentsman. It's your mom. Gustav Doll Loverson. His uh, mom, I don't, Dolly I don't know the Doll Lover. About. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't remember. Yeah. But either way, it doesn't matter. These things are just scary. Like, why? I mean, so they're supposed to be like cherubic. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, evoke like youthful rosy cheeks and uh, uh this one escaped from a uh anorexia bin uh -huh. and it uh it has like really sunken in cheeks and it's not rosy at all the mouth is like it's like they made a mouth and then they were like oh yeah we forgot to put lips on there so they just kind of shoved in some lips and teeth and it's really weird looking the model for annabelle was that lady in Fight Club that had the debilitating cancer and nobody would have sex with her? That's who it is. Oh my god! I'm. I hey. God rest her soul. You know, fight and power, whatever. I don't know, but the Annabelle, best porcelain dolls are creepy as fuck. I don't care what anybody I, says. I get, yeah, but they're creepy, Sam. They're not ugly. This thing is just straight up ugly. Whoever. It's designed this worked for one day and the porcelain doll guy said we do creepy not uh ran over by a truck Clint Howard. Also like the lipstick paint was like all over the place. Yeah. Like, I want you to make the doll look like it used two sticks of lipstick giving blueies behind a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no it's awful. It's not creepy. I laughed at it. I was not Nothing like. Nothing is scary in this. I laughed at it. It looks awful. Um, okay, and then she's like, "We've been looking for this forever," implying that it's an extremely rare doll, and that he had to go out of his way to get it, which implies that it has value to it. Because, as you well aware, Sam, uh, some of these porcelain dolls are very highly collectible and worth a shit ton of money. And shit loads of money. This is implying that this is one of those dolls. I bring that up for later. Um, so they, they've got Annabelle. She sticks it on a shelf and uh, they're on their way. Uh, that 
night, maybe a later night, uh, the, the sh they're sleeping. We get Jackie's shot that she uh, hasn't seen in Vertigo. And, um, and uh, the neighbors have been murdered. Uh, she's like, hey, can you go check it out? I heard somebody scream. And he's like, oh, I'll go check it out. I'm a tough guy. So he goes next door. And uh, she, leaving her alone, his pregnant wife alone, which is a recurring theme in this movie. And she's attacked by this guy that's in her bedroom. And they're dressed like cult members. There's a lady there and they're covered in blood. He, she gets stabbed in the tummy immediately. And then her husband flies in, dive tackles the guy, and uh, they fight until the cops show up and blow the two cult people away. The response time was really good for... Good, good, good L.A. Yeah. Also, I had to look up to see if nine one one was here yet. Mm. May not have been. I don't know. Now I that I know, know the timeline. Yeah. Because this, the investigation to the Annabelle doll, which starts with the nursing students, was in nineteen sixty eight. Which okay. means if this is a year before, that would be nineteen sixty seven. And the nine mm -hmm. nine one one system wasn't a thing until nineteen sixty eight. Oh, okay. All right. So you had to yeah. know the the number to call an ambulance. Yeah, because when I'm watching it, I was like, when is 911? And I look it up in 68, and I'm just like, okay, hall pass. This has got to be post-68. But now I know the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, fun fact. I learned that before we had time zones, we didn't have time zones until the train, the railway system, because we didn't need them. But before we had time zones, uh, the time in the town was managed by in each individual town or city. And the guy in charge of telling you what time it was, was the jeweler. He had clocks. He had clocks and watches. The official timekeeper of town was the jeweler. And you go to the next town and that jeweler would say, no, that's not the right time. And everybody would get all confused because all these jewelers are loosey goosey with time. <laughs> The jewelers have to call proxies in gunfights. Yeah, right. <laughs> over what time it is. Hey, right. You, you you killed my sister and stole my cattle. I want to duel with you at high noon. Yeah. But first, and we got to meet both, with the jeweler to find out what time high noon actually is. They both forget to wind their watches. Uh-huh. Everybody's late. There's bullets fly. The duels are, like, getting misscheduled. Like, there's dueling conflicts. Like, no, we had high noon. No, 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 no. You guys had one o'clock. It is one o'clock. No, it's high noon. All right, let's go ask the jeweler. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns out they had to just shoot each other all the way. <laughs> you want to know <laughs> something else that isn't this movie? Kind of uh -huh. that isn't that it's in the movie. He's driving a maverick. Yeah. Right. Med student. So? Maverick's it's a shitty car, even for Maverick's then. Crappy, Jackie. <laughs> Hey, it could be worse. He could be driving a Edsel. Um, okay, uh, back to the movie. Uh, where the frig are we? Uh, so we, Annabelle's there. Um, the the uh, neighbors have been murdered. Uh, the cult people have been murdered. And, like, some blood ends up on the Annabelle doll from the, the cult lady, who turns out to be the daughter of the neighbors. Uh, so that circles back. And I guess the blood is... I don't... <sighs> so why... I'm going to go back to motivation here. Later on, they're right? going to talk about they're trying to conjure up a demon. I'll ask the why on that later. Uh -huh. So let's just get, stick with they're going to try to conjure up a demon. So they murder her family. Why do they go next door and keep murdering? Why do they? Why any of it? Because uh, let's let's save that to the end, Sam, because there's some important stuff that we got to get to before. Maybe we can flush that out. But um, uh, either way, the baby's OK. Mom's OK. She's on bed rest, which doesn't really fucking play out in the movie. Like uh, you guys are setting this up as like, you know, a confinement. She can't move type thing. And then you go nowhere with it. Um, anyways, nowhere. There's, there's some spooky stuff that happens. Oh, come can't, on. But there there is a sewing machine that right. sews by itself. Yeah. Oh, the horror. Um. The TV doesn't oh, always work God. right. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, 1968 uh, RCA not working right all the time. Boy, horror. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> no, that's not what happens at all, Jackie. What happens is, is she fucking throws shit at it and it stops working. And she right? goes, the TV's out again from me throwing shit at it. <laughs> uh, Almost gotta... cost as much as our car. 
I've got a note here. The scariest thing that I saw in this movie was uh, that a woman, a grown woman, ate pickles covered in mustard. <laughs> what the fuck? Pickles and mustard? That's a thing? You ever heard as of that? As long as there's Anyone? like pastrami and bread. No, it's, not it's so just bad. a pickle dipped in <laughs> mustard. <laughs> just a pickle. A full size pickle. A classic dipped into some fucking Frenches. And mm. <laughs> just imagine the stomach ache. Oh my god! Imagine the the farts, pregnant lady farts, <laughs> pickles and mustard. Ah, oh, the horror! <laughs> we gotta move out of the house. <laughs> yeah, we need a we need a young priest and an old priest and a guy and a humidifier. <laughs> He would have seen if this movie was more realistic after the pickled mustard farts took on, you'd see the Annabelle doll with a little suitcase just walking out the front door. Nope. Nope. It's stinky in there. I'm going to have to find somebody else to murder. Uh-uh. Okay, so she's like, I don't like that Annabelle doll. Get rid of it. And so he fucking throws it in the trash. Like, he doesn't. They, they at no point do they think that like anything paranormal is happening regarding the Annabelle doll. They just don't want to see it anymore because that lady died while holding it, which I get. Um, get a different one. That one's contaminated from gross stuff. Uh, take it well, to a it fucking pawn shop. Its hair, huh? It still had blood in its hair. They probably like, watched the it out. Like, I mean, you don't just throw that in the trash, man. Go to the pawn shop. Pawn shop. Get a few hundred bucks for it. Probably wouldn't come back at that point. There's a number yeah. of things that John Boy, I believe his name is John, uh-huh. has done in this picture that are, don't really make sense. Binning the doll doesn't make sense. By the point that he bins the doll, that he hasn't bought a gun also doesn't make sense. True. Like, I'm not, hey, everybody, go buy a gun. Yeah. But if you're this guy and you've already had this many incidents, you're like, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to get a gun. Yeah, when cult leaders come into your house... Uh, you don't go, you don't not, A, don't not get a gun. But uh, the one thing I've learned, Sam, is you don't get a gun. You get a goddamn fucking flamethrower. That's how you get rid of cult members. If if Hollywood's oh, taught yeah, me anything. Oh, yeah, fucking A, man. <laughs> and literally, Hollywood. Once upon a time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. taught me anything. I mean, shit, you can deal with those dickheads with a phone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> what are you going to get? I'm going to get a rotary phone, a pit bull, and a flamethrower. Come the fuck in my house. Okay, so uh, the dad makes some popcorn and mom falls asleep. Whew, the horror. The horror. And this is the, some of the worst, like, uh, foreshadowing to, like, okay, they forgot the Jiffy Pop once because they're going right. to forget the Jiffy Pop again or some shit right. like that. Yep. Well, he turned off the stove. Yeah, and it's implied So it that wasn't going to cook the Jiffy Pop. Annabelle He ruined it the whole on. thing of Jiffy Pop. Yeah, you throw it away. Once you, you can't pause that halfway. Either way, uh, Annabelle turns on all the burners. Mom's asleep. Uh, there is no popping that takes place with the Jiffy Pop. She does not. She's, she's sewing and she's, watching TV, and she doesn't hear the popcorn being made, which if you uh, are, are big on uh, uh, linguistics, one of the key words in the word popcorn is pop. It pops. It makes sound. She would have yeah. heard it and been like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Dave, you left the fucking popcorn on, but the kitchen catches on goddamn fire and almost burns her whole house down with her in it. she's thrown so much shit at the TV that she has to crank it all the way up to get anything, <laughs> and then it just sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. Yeah, right. <laughs> high volume. She's like, I don't know what happened to popcorn. This is burning my ears. <laughs> I also would like to point out that this was the most scared I got uh, during this movie uh, when she sews her finger. They like led up to this like eight times. Yeah, right. I know. And then it finally happens and I'm like, oh, and then the popcorn incident. (laughs) You sew, right, Jackie? I I do needlepoint. It's, It's very different. But a sewing machine has that guard that you have to really like keep pushing past when you feel it and then yeah. jam your finger into where the needle is, yeah. which is what she's yeah. done here. Yeah. And I, I think that also the needle uh, doesn't go high enough 
to really get a full finger in there. I mean, she just scrapes the side of her finger. It's not like she sews her hands, her fingers together, and she's like, I've got crab hand now. Um, she, you know, it's sews not her like that. face to her hand. <laughs> Let me look and see what's happening here. Oh, God. It's like when you super glue your hand to your face. You guys ever done that? <laughs> I have. <laughs> oh, shit, I got super glue on my hand. And my eye itches. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, think I'm joking. Um, all right. So the house is on fire. She panics and she fucking trips on a chair and lands straight on her goddamn tummy, which leads me to believe that the baby was just like, boink, it just shoots right out. <laughs> because yeah. Because she's seen the fucking baby's out. Not dead. Not crushed from the weight of its mother landing on it. Just... <laughs> That's how babies are born, Justin. <laughs> Just push on her belly, it'll come out. It was it was caught harmlessly in a pile of burnt jiffy pop. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> the best the best uh, OBGYN doctor for his uh record amount of deliveries was Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> oh! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> The big elbow just fucked up my microphone. <laughs> uh, you know, he goes off the top ropes, lands yeah. on the tummy, the baby shoots out. That's how you, that's, you know, macho man. <laughs> what was the guy that was before when the AWA was still big and he was the bear hug guy? Oh, I can't remember. Do a lot of babies with the bear hug. Yeah, you get rid of some babies. George the but... Animal Steel. Was yeah. it George the Animal Steel? And then they just shoot safely onto the trampoline, bounce off of it, and land straight into dad's arms. Yeah. It's how birthing works, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, teacher, teacher, ten year olds. Okay, uh, so the baby's dead because you can't cr you can't land on a, your tummy and have the baby be okay. But um, it it popped out and there she's like, I can't live in that place anymore. We're moving to Pasadena, and he's and like, he's cool. like, no shit, you burnt the fucking house yeah, down. It, it, it There's no place to go back to. Yeah. It's a pile of rubble, so cool. Pasadena, here we come. And then they still go to the same fucking church. Pasadena is nowhere near Santa Monica. Yes, it's still in part of greater L.A., but greater L.A. A is a huge area of land. Long-ass drive. That's like four hours to get to but church. it's explained to be a long-ass drive later because the guy comes to the house and he has to drive back, and you're like, oh, God, that's going to be a hoof. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, so now she's like creeped out by the priest. She's like, oh, I don't like this priest guy anymore. She doesn't like anything. She's gone full poopy. She is poopy. She is super poopy. Um, so uh, she. And the husband, of course, is like, hey, you need drugs. I thought he said she needs a priest. No, at first he's like. You're fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. You've got postpartum depression. You need drugs. And she's like, just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you know everything. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, fine. We'll True. get a priest. Yeah, we'll get a priest. Okay. Um, but I don't like And priests. maybe he'll exorcist your ass back into the kitchen and make me a pie. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey there. It is 1968. So Jackie is... Uh, Historically accurate. Um, she goes home. She finds their movement. They're pa unpacking boxes. She finds Annabelle in a box and she's like, oh, hey, this doll that is burnt up now. It looked like fucking Jason before. Now it looks like Jason that burnt up like Freddy. Uh, boy, I want this. It's she wants worse it than that because she's just being poopy and he's like, oh, let me bin that again. And she's like, no, no you got it for me. I'm going to keep it because <laughs> everything sucks. Everything sucks. You suck and I suck and this doll sucks. So I'm going to keep it and put it here so we can remember how much everything sucks. Oh, my God. Weirdo. Uh, and uh, it's got blood in its hair. It's got yeah. shit all over its face. Yeah, it burnt up, Jackie. It's covered in soot. It smells like smoke, like house fire smoke. You can't, you can't keep your stuff once it's been on fire. <laughs> I didn't know that was not obvious. I, you have to get rid of all your stuff if your house gets on fire, even if it doesn't get to that room. Yeah, dude, smoke. Like, imagine the smell of burnt carpet. 
the smoke that comes out of your carpet on fire. It's, I don't know. I've never tried to burn a piece of carpet. It gets to a temperature that even if it's not on fire, what happens is, is the smoke particles basically bond in fuse, to whatever yeah. material. Yeah. There is no way to clean it. Uh-uh. It's done. You got to throw all your shit out. It's over. Oh. Yeah. Don't don't light your house on fire. Top tip. Okay. That's why they, that's why they come to Stinker Madness. That's what they're here for is for life advice like that. Don't light your house on fire. Remember to plug in the batteries to your cordless tools. Yeah. Remember, only you can prevent house fires by not falling asleep with a cigarette in your hand. Just don't buy Jiffy Pop. Don't buy it's death death in a pan. Death in a pan. Don't let don't let your ten year old cook, because he'll leave the burner on. Uh. So if this is the sixties, shouldn't she be drunk and smoking chain smoking cigarettes? No, she should be passed out at all times from quaaludes, Jackie. Yes. Yeah, and she's in California. What you were talking about with the drugs and the pies? Yeah, ludes, 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 ludes. ludes. She Meth doesn't have time for vacuuming. To drink. Ludes for sleeping. Yep. Yep. Doesn't have time for drinking. Um, okay, so she goes out with the baby, and she finds some uh, precocious scamps on the stairs, because uh, I guess they live in an apartment, <coughs> and they're rude little shits, whatever. And then uh, the thrill as she meets a bookstore owner. Ah! Uh, well, she's checking out a demonic book in the window, and she's thinking about it. But then, you know, that whole church complex kicks in, and she's like, I can't touch that book. It's the That's devil. The devil. It's the devil. Um, then it, she goes back into the apartment uh, stairwell and there's some crayon drawings that fall on her and, uh, it shows the baby carriage, um, uh, rolling down some stairs while Elliot Ness and Al Capone hurl lead at each other and she chases after it and it gets hit by a garbage truck, but actually it gets hit by a bus that can't go under the speed of 55 Ooh. and... <laughs> And Burt Reynolds jumps over it with a speedboat. <laughs> and if you look at the picture, like after the baby is dead, she mm -hmm. looks pretty happy. She's like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yay! Finally, you don't have to deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> and later, the dad, when she shows it to the dad, the dad's like, yeah. I mean, content aside, these kids can't draw for shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so they're like okay well we should go talk to their parents and they have a whole and scene about talking to the parents but they never go talk to the parents no they don't he doesn't he's starting to check out pretty hard as family dad right he's like yeah i'll do that and then he never does in his defense she's being a total shithead about everything uh, everything and that's why i i'm trying to get back into the office again uh -huh. So that I can be like, oh, Justin's being shitty again. I'm just going to go to work. And oh, yeah. Never yeah, come back. Yeah. No, you think that's not a thing, Jackie, where people go to work all the time to avoid their families? That's a thing. I'm pretty sure my dad did that. Okay. Because, you know, he was pretty young dad and he was probably like, I'll work three jobs. You just worry about you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking latchkey. Jackie was a goddamn latchkey kid. <laughs> yep. Okay, so mom, thrill as she has dinner and listens to the association. But it wasn't well, the association. Well, he was supposed to come home yeah. and they were going to have a nice meal together and then he doesn't show up. Yeah, because he doesn't, yeah. Because he hates his fucking family. Hey, Sam, did you see what she made for dinner? Uh, it was like it food like and milk. Potatoes. Yeah. There was like looked, milk at the bottom and there was some food in it. Well, we know that she is has terrible uh, cravings, pregnancy cravings. So maybe that's her thing. She's crappy at sewing. Yeah, my sister when she was pregnant, she uh, she had to have her husband get rid of all the laundry detergent in the house. Hmm. Because she wanted to drink Kool Aid and laundry detergent. That's her cravings. Couldn't stop thinking about it. That's fucking crazy, fucking man. Weird. It is fucking crazy. You know how many hormones are pumping through your body? Jackie, you never had to go through this, and I'm so glad because you're already a crazy maniac as it is. The podcast would have just been straight up 
fire. Like it would have just been the weirdest fucking thing that would have ever happened if you had been pregnant and on this podcast and Jackie, like Sam and I would have not got words in like movies would not have been talked about. It yeah. just would have been banana shit the entire time. But yeah, you get pretty nutty when you're pregnant. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. I'm glad you didn't either. Hormones are bullshit, dude. Like, hormones are total bullshit. They take you over. They, When you are on hormones, you are not you. You have no control. The you that is you, whatever that is, if it's a soul or just your consciousness, ceases to be because it's being controlled by hormones. Just wait, though, gentlemen. I might have not have done the pregnancy thing, but uh, that old lady syndrome is coming in pretty hot. And uh, eventually I'm going to get, what is that called? Menopause? <laughs> Menopause. <laughs> Manny Petty. Yeah, Manny Petty. <laughs> Manny Petties are totally different. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll get the hot flashes. And I heard that you go kind of fucking nuts then, too. So, yeah, it's not fair. You know, we, it's not fair. We might. We we still might be able to have that banana business, but I'll probably just be a shithead like this wife is. Yeah. And yeah. then Justin will be like, I took a job. I work three jobs and I'm never home now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I work three jobs. You take care of you. G- going to be coming home late to get in, honey. And then I'm just at God the didn't have a sense of humor. Then a 70s Corvette would cure menopause too. <laughs> Yep. God wasn't and a in gold earring. Yeah. Okay, we got to move on. Um. So she is like, hey, the association, but not the association. Really, stop playing. I hate. I hate when movies can't just like they get the rights to the song, and so they just have some shitty band cover it. Just fucking pay for. It's the association. They can't be that expensive to have cherish on your fucking movie. Whatever. Um. So she looks behind the curtains, and the curtains like flare up, and the curtains knock her to the ground. Or maybe it's a rushing child that's hiding in the curtains that knocks her down. Either way, a grown ass pregnant woman who weighs two hundred and fifty pounds because the baby. Oh wait, she's not pregnant anymore. She's anyway, not pregnant anymore. Grown ass yeah. woman gets knocked to the ground by either curtains or a child. Yeah. But either I think way, it's the curtains. At this point, we're at like forty eight minutes and forty nine uh-huh. seconds. We're halfway through the movie. I had to pause and go get ice cream, and my note is that ice cream did not make it better. <laughs> um, I actually want to start burning through some of this shit because a lot of it just doesn't fucking matter. So yeah. there's a bunch of bah, 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 yeah. I'm poopy, da 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 da. But she has to go to the basement because we're gonna like finally we're halfway through. We're at the makeout phase where we're we're ten minutes out from the mm-hmm. shame period where you start right. watching the movie maybe, and so they're gonna bring in the demon Necrozool. The demon Necrozool. I named the demon this because this movie is so fucking boring that I had to start writing my own <laughs> events in here. So they go into the basement and she's like, ah, I'm going to check out the basement because it's making weird baby noises. Mm-hmm. And really nothing's happening in the basement, but she fucks around for a while with the flashlight. And then there's a demon in the back of the basement. And he's like, I'm Necrozool. And she's like, oh, I'm going to run to the fucking elevator. So she goes to the fucking elevator and Necrozool's like, I can control the elevator with my Necrozool powers. <laughs> and he does that for like fucking five minutes. Uh-huh. And she can't you know, go anywhere. She's standing like, off to the side, or- hitting the button again. Yeah. Like as soon as she does, as soon as she gets the door closed, she's like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Necrozool got you again, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doors open <laughs> it's like he's in the car driving off every time she tries to grab the door handle that's happening on screen with a demon in an elevator it's fucking terrible <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but i guess it scratched her too and it like it scratched it gave her the mark of necrozool <laughs> the mark of necrozool yeah so i'm gonna skip more ahead so he's like i'm necrozool and she's like i'm gonna run away necrozool and he's like we'll have to use the fucking stairs <laughs> and then he grabs her arm and she's like oh my god necrozool grab my arm and she looks at it and it's got this like drawing of a fucking necrozool mark or whatever and she goes upstairs and there's a bunch of more creepy shit she listens to the white album backwards <laughs> And then the next day, she fucking calls the cops, and he comes, and she's like, show me all the crap you got. And he's like, I think this is stupid bullshit. Here it is. And she's like, what's that? And he's like, I don't know, some fucking hippie bullshit. They were on drugs, and they're drawing shit about Satan. And she's like, I got that on my arm, but to herself, not to him. And he's like, 
okay, whatever. And she's like, can I keep this? And he's like, yeah, fucking, I don't want it, whatever. And so she does. And then she goes down to the bookstore lady from Scrooge. And she's like, hey, lady from Scrooge, what do you know about demons? And she's like, oh, don't, you know, whatever. But I know everything about fucking demons. <laughs> Let's get you some demon books <laughs> and have lunch. And then also there's going to be a bus hit your book your baby carrier full of books because you're irresponsible and you see shit. <laughs> and they all and go, then they well, talk about it going really fast. Do you think it was going faster than 55? <laughs> <laughs> it can't stop. It can't it was, stop. It was actually the two guys from men at work. It was the, the Estevez brothers <laughs> and David Keith and never run over a baby carriage. God damn it. On their way and, to the uh, gay bar. <laughs> Meanwhile, the lady from Scrooge is like, yeah, I had a daughter and like she died. So I tried to kill myself because demons. But then my daughter like came to me and she's like, no, don't do that. It's not your time yet, which will come into play later. Oddly. Yeah. yeah Just yeah. the worst fucking thing ever is going to happen later. So, yeah, there's a bunch of bullshit. There's a bunch of demons. They call the uh, father Perez. And the dad comes back finally from drinking and carousing for three fucking days. <laughs> yeah, like, where's this no guy No shit, been? no shit. <laughs> and he's like, oh, i still married to you or whatever. And she's like, I talked to the lady from Scrooge and we got all kinds of dumb shit happening. And he's like, I'm calling the priest. Well, so the she, priest oh, comes. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the dumb teenage makeout scenes that I do want to talk about is that when the she here's something. And so she goes into another room and she's locked into the nursery because she fucking left the baby by itself. Again, when she's down in the basement, the fucking baby is upstairs by itself. Yep. For like 30 minutes. Like, Oh, she can't, just... cook, she can't sew. And she's a terrible mother. She leaves her ch child. And we know because the lady from Scrooge told us that it wants a sacrifice and it, you can't, it has to be willing sacrifice. So I guess she's like, oh, well, it's not going to kill my baby because my baby can't be like, yeah, go ahead, Satan, take my soul. I'm a baby. Uh, it can't negotiate devil contracts because it's a baby. Uh, it has to, I don't, whatever. It's stupid. And But so like books are falling at it because she's like, ah, it's going to kill the baby. And she fucking gets out of there. And she gets the baby and then she turns around and Annabelle, the doll is there and it floats up into the air, but then we get a tighter shot and it's the, what, what are we calling it? The Nazgul? Necrozool. Necrozool is holding up Annabelle. Like, yeah. I like to play with dolls. <laughs> it's like, not levitating. I'm, I'm just standing here holding it. Do you like Jeff Dunham specials? <laughs> <laughs> comedy. I can drink water and do it. The voice will talk to Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle, my point being, Annabelle at no point Chucky's out. Annabelle is not a doll that is possessed by the spirit. It may be possessed, but the spirit has no ability to like make the doll move. It's just it a necrozole playing with dolls. That is yes. the horror of this movie. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> oh my god! That should have been like it at the end. Stupid, they just too. like cut back to Necrozool's antics, right? Where he's just like put the doll in the rocking chair and he's just like pushing it back and forth, and going, Super cut. "Oh, Necrozool's really gonna get this family." <laughs> or, I don't know if he's even trying to. I think Necrozool just likes dolls, like has tea parties and shit. <laughs> I I don't. <laughs> playing four hands of bridge with himself. <laughs> Looks like Necrozool's gonna win again, ladies. <laughs> I think he just likes dolls. Because the, the like, <sighs> Necrozool moves on his own. He doesn't work through Annabelle. He crawls on the ceiling and does all that stupid crap. Also, he looks fucking stupid. He's a guy dressed in one of those, like, practical effects guy that raises the Annabelle doll to make it float on screen, but he's dressed in black. So you can't see him because he gets a back. That's who he is. What do yep. they call those guys? A fucking gaffer. He's just a no. fucking gaffer with a fucking mask on. <laughs> They're actually just called puppeteers. Even if you're just doing it with your hand. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, like usually it's not an actual professional puppeteer in a movie. It's like the PA that does it. Gary. <laughs> yeah. Jerry. 
<laughs> Lift it up. That's what he's dressed in. He's got a skin tight black suit and a stupid mask that's a ram because yeah. he's the ram demon. So he works for Dodge, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. He's their number one salesman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you should have been with me and my uh, other demon buddy, Hellcat. <laughs> Guys, VH forever, right, guys? Also, do you guys like dolls, right? Dolls are cool. <laughs> well, zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. I had like five dolls in the backseat of my Challenger. <laughs> oh, God, this movie's dumb. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. It's so stupid. Okay. Uh, and the dad comes in. Well, it's holding up the doll and the ram demon with the powers of the Nazgul or whatever the fuck is fart, fart, farts, farts, uh, is like, oh shit, dad's here. I gotta go <laughs> and runs away. Sausage party. I'm out. <laughs> we should also mention that this, this is an hour and nine minutes into this film uh -huh. that we finally like. Okay, something's happening with this doll. It's it's rising up, and then you see the necromancer, necrozool behind necrozool. it, and you're like, "Oh, so the doll's not really doing anything." But it's not. <sighs> no, necrozool has been behind all of the antics. Yep. So the priest to comes the point by. That he's this like, "Movie should be called Necrozool, the necrozool, antique meister." Uh, yeah. So the priest comes by, and he's like, "Well, that demon doll, it's it's channel, it's I don't know. I'm not sure how demons work, even though I'm a priest." But it's got something to do with the doll. If we take the doll away, he's going to be like, oh, no more tea parties. Uh, he probably so he'll move on. just very pragmatically talks to them for five minutes and goes, well, they're really fixated on this doll they hate. Let me take this somewhere Let for you, take you fucking take idiots. Back to church. But he gets to church. And he, uh, mind you, it's, it's Sam said earlier, it takes him fucking forever. He also drives across a bridge that doesn't. There's no bridge. Is there's like no that bridge. Now. Yeah. I mean, I um, guess you could. He could have gone the long way to San like, Francisco. Through, no, he could have gone like all the way down to like through Long Beach and then crossed the bridge at the city of industry that goes through that little inlet and then really been out of his so, way. So you're saying he could have got on Ventura and then taken the 405 down to the one and jumped on the one and got off on El Segundo? No. No. That would be stupid. Yeah, he would have been by actually he would have he would have had to get off on El Segundo, you're absolutely right. And then head back inland. That would be well, dumb. And, and <laughs> would at be this totally point, I dumb. I thought he was gonna be in an accident because he's not watching the road at all. He's like looking all over the place. Right? And he's like watching the doll in the back seat. Messing with and I'm the like, fucking okay, radio. This is, when, this is when the doll jumps up, right? And, yeah. and he crashes his car off the side of this bridge. Yeah. So no, Nothing he just, happens. he gets to the church. He opens up the door and he's fucking blown to safety. No, Necrozul punches him in the face. Necrozul punched him? I didn't see that. Well, you no, we're just assuming because Necrozul's behind all this. The doll can't do anything by herself. He opens up the door and gets knocked back. By who? Necrozul. Punches he's, him right in the face. He falls down and like, cracks his head open on the stairs. My doll. How'd you get in the church, Necrozul? You're a demon. This is holy ground. He can do whatever he wants. He punched him in the face before he got all the way in. So, like, he ran he, up to the top of the stairs and... Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> Chabow! <laughs> Fuck Close, you! Clothesline! To back to your car. Yeah. All right, then the he did lady. some Ric flaring about yeah. after the clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> if you were pregnant right now, I'd give you the big elbow. Uh, so the book lady, uh, she spends the entire day with mom, and uh, she says that her, she killed her own kid. Like, how'd your kid die? Oh, I killed her um, by driving poorly. I fell asleep at the wheel, and uh, yeah. Oh, that sucks. I wasn't seeing that. Uh, the priest wakes up and it, it tells dad, uh, oh, the demon's coming because the doll, uh, whatever, it's back at your house because he loves dolls. And the dad calls, gets on the phone. He's like, ah, well, honey, uh, get out of the apartment. But the, the Necrozool has uh, U.S. West Pac Bell fucking with powers. It could fuck with the sound of the phone. Yeah, so she can't he's actually hear just standing next to her going, wah, wah, <laughs> you can't hear anything, I'm Necrozool, <laughs> fucker of with people. Uh, 
And so there's more weird, dumb, haunting stuff happening at the apartment. The baby is MIA. And uh, mom's like, we got to find the baby. We got to find the baby. And the book lady's like, no, we got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck your baby. <laughs> Wait, what? She's like, we'll get the baby later. We need to piece the fuck out right now. <laughs> you can't get the baby later. So this whole point where I'm like, is the lady from Scrooge on Necrozul's side? Because right? this would be something that Necrozul would want her to do is lead her away from the baby. So that uh-huh. later we go back down to the basement, like the baby's like on the wheel of pain. And Necrozul's like, I have your baby on the wheel of pain. <laughs> and then the lady from Scrooge is like, ha ha, I got you, bitch. And that doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. Something way dumber than that happens. Something way dumber. So, she, the Ram thing, Necro guy, it just kind of punts her out of the front door. Like, this guy is a major punter. He's been punching. Necrozool. He's, he's been punching. He's been punting. Like, he just, his, his main thing is like, get out of here, guys. He doesn't kill anybody. He just punts him. You know what I mean? Well, you know, he's yeah, a bad he... guy when he punches a priest in the face. Well, yeah, he's a bad guy, but, like, the body count is pretty low in this movie for having a demon hanging out with people. Where well, the body count's only at two so far. But the no, demon hasn't four. killed any. Four. Well, who's the four? So he killed the, the... Neighbors. The neighbors got killed. Right. And then the two... two uh, and then the killers, the, the killers got killed. Yeah. But the demon the has... Okay, four. Annabelle or the demon has not done any of that stuff at all. A- Annabelle has done nothing but sit in a chair. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and get, like, shooken around by Necrozul, the evil demon. How about, how about what happens next where the mom is trying to find the baby and she finds Annabelle in the crib and then just beats the shit out of Annabelle... And then she sees that instead what she's done is beat the shit out of her baby against a crib. So the baby would be dead. The baby would be super dead and not just laying there like, like it's a little borderline not okay movie. Well, and then she picks it up and it's a totally different doll. Right, right. It's just a doll. It was an illusion. But right. Perhaps you were unsure about whether or not Necrozul was the master of the old switcheroo. Yeah, the old uh, quarterback keep a baby. <laughs> switcher baby. Yeah, the, the baby and switch. Uh, yeah, I mean, still, like, there's a point in this movie where you're like, oh, my God, that mom just beat the shit out of her baby against a crib. Not okay. Yeah, that would have been a really like somber, horrible ending. Yeah, <laughs> really bad. <laughs> like, and it would have worked for what they were talking about. That you have to trick. He has to trick you into giving you the soul. Uh-huh. And then she would have been like, "Oh damn it, he got me! I just beat my own baby to death. Yeah, I don't deserve to live." And then jumps out a window or something. Right. But also, which is, is what she's about to do. She's going to jump out the window because she's like, okay, this guy's, if he wants my baby, my baby can't give its baby back ribs, baby, baby, uh, to him. So I'll give my own life to hit my soul. I'll jump out this window and die. I guess I have to take Annabelle the doll with me as part of the negotiations because I'm holding There's on to There's also it. a point. Where all of a sudden Necrozul has has become a little bit bigger in his britches than he should be because everybody's like, well, apparently this, you know, fucking nobody demon has to have a soul or he's going to quit fucking with us. Right. Um, They just give up on, like, telling him to fuck off or getting an exorcist or doing anything like, well, he punched the priest we got, so I guess he wins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the thing is, is like, is death, is that how the transfer, like, is that enough? Does he get a soul if somebody dies? Well, here's the deal. People die all the goddamn time. I think you have to, like, be like, well, I'll die and you can have my soul. Like, it's a Faustian negotiation well, that has to take place. That's what she eventually, after a bunch of nonsense and the dad comes home, John's like, don't do it. And she's like. This is the only way. I have to give him my soul. I'm going to jump out the window. 
And so she has entered into a verbal contract with herself, which I guess he can take advantage of later. Yeah. But how about just nobody, like nobody gives their soul because the baby can't, the baby cannot. It's, so it, it, the rules have been established that the baby cannot give up its soul because it's a goddamn baby. So how about the well, adults just say, uh, no, you can't have our souls either. And what happens after that? Does Necro Ghoul just keep fucking with them forever? Like, is that the downside? Yes, to- they haven't really talked that out. They don't know where the baby is, so they're in panic mode. And they're like, let's draw short straws, and somebody is Necrozools now. Yeah. How, how about nobody is? Cause it, I, like, just calm it down for a maybe, minute. Maybe call an attorney instead of a priest that can go over some contracts with you. Just, you, know, you know, like, this is bi- legally binding and this one's not. Just don't do the contract at all. But then he's going to keep, like... Playing with our dolls. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. I kind of wonder if, like, they would just go re- gotten rid of the dolls if... what What's his name again? Necro... Necro... Necrozool. Necrozool would have been like, that's it, I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm, I'm bored. Like, this place sucks. What would he have done? I mean, he could have just kept hanging out in the basement and being creepy, yeah. but ultimately that's all he did all he was did. just be creepy in the basement. Yeah, it's just kind of annoying. Like, hey, Necro, so we'll, we're trying to have dinner. Could you go play with your dolls in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> like once a year, they're like, oh, somebody's going to have to go fuck with the furnace down in the basement again. Yeah. Like, why is that such a bad deal? They're like, well... Do you like puppet shows? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the dad busts in while she's in the window. Talks her's not down. He just grabs her, whatever. And then the book lady is like, well, somebody's got to die. And I killed my kid. So. Ah. What? Yeah. Like, I'm watching this whole movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm bored to tears. But then this happens, and I write down, what the fuck? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and then it's like in giant letters, never mind, I'll do it. I want to do it. Yeah, it's me. It's my turn. So she goes to hell forever? Is that what I happens? I guess. I think, I mean, that's, she entered into that contract. It clearly is what the Necrozool wanted, because he's not in the movie for the rest of it. He's Maybe he wanted a this friend, and so he traps her into one of the other dolls so that they can have the tea doll parties. Will, yeah, they can have more tea parties, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's not just making up the voices for all the other things, like all the other yeah. dolls. Like he's just collecting souls for the dolls that are in his room, and he's like, "Okay, now you get to be Nancy. This one's you." And, and it really sucks because he's always loading the deck when they play bridge. Mm-hmm. And they can't move their hands without him. So they're just like, I guess you win again, Necrozool, because you keep fucking cheating. And all we can do is sit here. There's this guy over here. He has to push a rock up every day and it rolls back down the hill. There's another guy that's tied up to a cross and a bird is pecking out his insides. I have it the worst in hell. Yeah. I would trade you fully to not play another day of bridge. I'll push the rock up the hill. You play bridge for once. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Disembowel me. If I have to watch this guy play bridge in front of me by himself one more time, Jesus. <laughs> I just want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> I am just baffled by how stupid the end, because this movie sucks. Yeah. It sucks yeah. all the way through, but right. then it just like comes in and goes, hey, hey, wait a second. Here's the stupidest ending. You couldn't have even come up with something so stupid. At the end of this movie, because even the way it's shot, they're like the man, the husband and wife are talking to each other. And then she just goes, hey, over here. (laughs) And then there's a shot of her standing in the window and she's like, bye bye (laughs) and just dies. And they're like, cool, thanks. Nothing transpires with them at all. (laughs) And then it cuts to the priest like you're already like, well, this is really fucking stupid. And it cuts to the priest, and the priest just goes, like, this is the denouement of the film. Uh-huh. The priest is like, well, nobody what hap- knows what happened to that doll, so, uh, yeah, that's going to suck for somebody else. Okay, bye. Yeah, and she ends up, Annabelle ends up in some doll store as a collector item, and some lady buys her. And then that's it with for that. The and then it goes to nurses the- nurses at the beginning 
of the movie. That was the nurse at the beginning of the movie? That seemed like just some yeah, that, lady. That was her mom. She's like, my mom bought me this. That's how they try to tie that shit together. It's fucking terrible. None of it's necessary. It's fucking terrible. Uh, oh, the contract. Well, and she's, um, she's at a thrift yeah. store. But they have other dolls there, too. It's like a doll <clears throat> thrift store. Doll donation well, center. Well, let me put it this way. When an old lady dies, Justin, mm -hmm. and she collects dolls, mm -hmm. where do you think those dolls go? eBay? No, they go to the thrift store because the family's like, fuck this shit. I'm not hauling these things around yeah those people are oh morons. no there's anybody that collects dolls has somebody they know that will descend upon oh, those yeah, dolls absolutely. immediately the, every old lady on that street is they're just waiting for yeah. each other to die it's like what those what's what are those little german knickknacks that uh the people go crazy for <laughs> the old ladies love i don't know it's just knickknack bullshit they want their knickknacks jackie it's, yeah. it, it, it's what like, happens when all the old ladies die, like an old lady bus accident. Then the kids are like, oh, God, we have too many dolls now. All the old ladies are dead. You'd want to keep them together. We wouldn't want them to get dirty. I can help with that. Yeah. And then they're just like, yeah, whatever with these fucking ugly dolls, not knowing that the collection is worth yeah. like 300 grand right. or some shit right. like that. Right. Exactly. No, that, you, that, you can't take that shit to a thrift store. Say if there was thrift stores there, I'd make a business and buying at, a, at ugly ass dolls and selling them online. But yeah, you'd get kneecapped on the way there by Sotheby's. <laughs> like, what are you doing, you <laughs> stupid idiot? Uh, yeah, and then I guess she ends up. Annabelle ends up with the Conjuring people, whatever. At some point, in real life, is what the movie's telling us. I guess. I don't know. And she gets yeah. blessed twice a month, or no, twice a week. She. Oh yeah, by twice a, a month. Twice a week, somewhere like the that. The priest comes in a couple times a week and just blesses everything so that there's no demonic possession, I guess. Can you just, like, do it from the outside? Be like, ah, this place is blessed. Or, like, online. Can they do Zoom blessings? I don't know. They should look well, they, doubt it. They gotta have the water. What about, you know, like, the... what about, like, blessing the water emoji that people use to represent, represent semen when they, like send dick pics that that little emoji they so they just text the doll eggplant emojis twice a week and mm -hmm. we're good yep blessed okay blessed eggplants with with the spooge thing yep all good i mean we live in the future guys we got to make some you know get with the times the church the best part about what happens in this movie is that contractually they're obligated to tell some of these stories by the couple or whatever mm -hmm. And they do with the beginning and the end, like, oh, I had this doll in nursing school and some guy fucked with me. My mom bought it for me. That's all that actually happened. Right. So none of the stuff in the movie actually happened, though. Right. Right. Of course. Right. So none of the, this is one of those where everything you've seen didn't happen. Yeah, it is. This is Monster A Go Go. You're absolutely right because. It's book making it suck more. Yeah, it's bookended by well, this is what actually happened. This other stuff did not actually happen. That sucks. This movie just lost all of its stars. I mean, I didn't like it to begin with, but when, how many stars did it? Probably have? three is what I where I was really? at. Yeah, because the cinematography is fine. Um, uh, the the I, I appreciate its efficiency. Um, I riffed really hard on this thing the whole time. Yeah. Uh, but no, when you do the monster, a go, go ending, you, it's gone. You lost all of them. That is my biggest pet peeve in film is you telling me everything you've just seen was bullshit and didn't actually happen in real life or in the universe that we even just put it in zero stars. This is a zero star yeah. film that sucks. I so I'm taking off. it that this is not a do for you. This is not a do for me. No, sadly, it is definitely not. Uh, even though I, like I said, I riffed on it pretty hard. But you're skipping ahead. Do, uh, did we answer your question, Sam? Which I think was, what's the Necrozool's motivation? How does that work? No, we need to talk about this. So Necrozool shows up and he's like, I'm out of your basement. Mm -hmm. right. You guys like Jeff Dunham, huh? Right. And then... Uh, he's like, BTW, if I don't get a stole, I'm going to keep fucking with you. Uh -huh. 
And if I do, then what? Well, I think we answered that. It's tea parties in hell. But they're trying to conjure him up, thinking that they need him there for, like, leadership roles for their cult. The disciples of the Rams. So if he gets the soul, does he just hang out and, like, start running a pawn shop or something? Yeah. Oh, you mean what's the motivation for the disciples of the Rams? What's their end game? Or anybody. Like, what happens to Necrozul now that the lady that owned the bookstore inexplicably kills herself for very little reason? They, she is in hell at a Tea Party Bridge Club. He's her best friend now. So he just goes back? Yeah, he just goes back to hell. So what the fuck is the motivation of the two people that are on the killing spree to get him to show up in the first place? Maybe they're bored and lonely? And they want a necro... Maybe they like they dolls? They need him to, she like, clearly come like dolls. hang out. She said, I like dolls. I... She wants another doll person to play with. They also want dolls. No. It doesn't work. He has to, like, be corporeal for them as their leader uh -huh. otherwise you wouldn't conjure him right we're gonna kill four people uh -huh. so that this demon can come kill one the math isn't the math, there you're, you're right. gonna the be more efficient stupid. on your own yeah the math is stupid the math is stupid it, and also why you even conjure him just be like hey i read this book about the disciples of the ram and uh this guy uh in hell he's bored and lonely and likes dolls and i like i'm bored and lonely and li i like dolls uh, I'll just kill myself and say, hey, Necrozul, I'm going to give you my soul so that I can come down there and hang out with you and play dolls together. You don't even have to come to Earth. Let's just skip that whole step. So there's no point in anybody doing anything. There is zero point in anybody doing anything. And this adds the idiot plot to a zero star movie. Can we do negative <gasps> stars? Is that... <laughs> Is that something that we've ever discussed? Like, do we need to call an attorney? We've in? never discussed it, and I'm not going to give it that for one reason. I suffered through this movie. Uh -huh. Like, I got up six or seven times. Ice cream didn't help. Uh -huh. I got an ice cream bar to try to put myself in a better place in the middle of the movie. But <laughs> the ending was so dumb that I was like, wow. And it doesn't work at all without suffering through the whole thing. Uh -huh. So if there was a negative, that would bring it back to zero because the ending is so inexplicably stupid that I'm like, well, I'm not horridly upset that I saw this because ultimately I saw an end cap to digest this, this dumb end cap to a just mundane experience that is just bizarre and stupid. Okay, so you're giving you're putting that negative star back for its ending. It's back to yeah, zero. Yeah, it goes okay. back into the z zero. Okay. It's I, I can non quantifiable. I guess we don't need to call an attorney this time. No, no demon movie contracts today. Sam and Warner Brothers or whoever. And it immediately isn't like one of the worst movie experience. It's still one of the most boring movies I've ever seen. But it's not like. Oh, I absolutely <laughs> hated it all the way it's not because Mortal the Kombat ending was so dumb. It's not Mortal Kombat Annihilation. No, the, the ending's so dumb that at least I got something. I was like, wow, that's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. It's just Monster Go Go. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's do this. Uh, final recommendations. I already said my piece. Uh, it's a do not for me. It's just too boring, even with the dumb ending. Sam. Don't. Even for the dumb ending, don't. Yeah. Jackalope. It would need like four other things as dumb as the dumb ending to like give it a over the top price of admission. It's just it's it's bland as all get yeah, out. It's pretty bland. Jackie. So I thought I'd seen this movie mm -hmm. and apparently I have not because okay. I don't remember this movie at all. I think I watched a different one that was based off another creepy doll and thought mm -hmm. that it was Annabelle. Maybe you watched the sequel. I I think I did. <clears throat> Um, but this is definitely a, just don't, it was so draggy and boring and it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't make any sense. And like at the end, they're talking about Lorraine and what was his name? Warren. Yeah, I think so. Or no, that's their last John. 
Oh, yeah, Lorraine and Warren, whatever. The yeah. Warrens, their last name. Yeah, the Warrens. And I'm like, who the fuck are the Warrens? <laughs> and I asked Justin that, and he's like, I don't know. Oh, I told you this was in the Conjuring <laughs> universe. Oh, yeah, you told me it was in the Conjuring universe. So I just thought they were made up people. And then to hear in Sam's uh, recap of things that they are actual people, I was like, oh, my God, just fucking kill me. Like, yeah. why don't they have, like, why don't they take those two people and make, like, a little mini series out of their escapades, right? <laughs> Where they're just kind of charlatans. <laughs> well, that's what they did. It's called the Conjuring fran- universe, Jackie. It's called the Conjuring, yeah. and uh, Patrick Wilson has the misfortune of starring alongside Vera Farmiga, who deserves to be in that picture. Yes, by the she way. does. He, he does not. <coughs> he deserves better. He is terrible in that. Fran- I mean, his acting is real bad, though, Sam. It's almost he probably worth doesn't Jackie know what he's doing there, so that you can see how terrible his acting is. In that franchise. He's great. Uh, uh, some other you know, stuff, to but. even further the mythos of the Annabelle thing, you know what happened about five years before somebody came up with the Annabelle's The Living Doll thing? The episode of The Twilight Zone, The Living Doll. Yeah. So it's Not probably just Chucky. bullshit. Chucky's kind of a big deal. Everybody, Chucky, remember him. Uh, all right, that's your movie and your podcast. Next week on the show, I am forcing Sam to get on Paramount Plus and we are going to watch New York Ninja because it's amazing and everybody should see it so that's what we're doing Uh, have a great week guys get to the chopper